Alright guys and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about how I have personally prepared for the launch of the Burned Crusade which will be launching for me as I upload this video in a few hours. As many of you know by now I decided to totally re-roll my class for the Burned Crusade which means I've had a lot less time to actually prepare. I think I've had in total a month but Again, I do sympathize with the people who have decided to level a Drana or a Blood Elf. By the way, guys, if you want a really fast leveling guide for TBC, whether you're doing dungeons or open world leveling, and you also want to support the channel, then you might want to check out the Rested XP guide. I will leave a link to that in the description below. So, if I open my bags on my character right now, as you can see, it is an absolute utter mess. So you may be wondering, why, what are all these items? These items are literally all quest items. I'm absolutely decked to the teeth in various different quest items. I only have that much bag space actually left. If you go to my quest log, there, there is 25 quests ready to complete. Okay, and the great thing about many of these quests is, first of all, the, a lot of them are dungeon quests or, or PvP quests like this, which grant a ridiculous amount of experience, or they are quests like the Eye of the Embassier, or my favourite of all time, Above and Beyond, which will quickly chain into new quests to gain even more experience. Like this Above and Beyond one, I'm pretty sure it gives nearly 40,000 experience. It's that ridiculous. Some of these quests will also be giving me some ridiculously powerful gear for when I am levelling in TBC. For instance, well, not ridiculously powerful, but nice. At the end of the day, I've only had a month to gear up this character. We'll talk about my gear later. But um, here we have the Woe Stave, which I will be using. Little cheeky extra spell power, really cannot complain at that. And then I've also got the Winterfell Runners, which grants me a 29 spell power trinket. I'll put it on the screen right now. I've talked about it on my channel before, so I can't wait to get that turned in, particularly as I've got the Briarwood Reed sneakily chilling in my uh, on my character right now as well, as you can see there. So I'm really happy about being able to snag that very um, luckily last night. Overall, I think turning in these quests, um, I'll have to recalculate it because I've calculated it based on 20 quests, but then I didn't realize obviously you get five extra quests in your quest log um, in TBC. So if this will definitely grant me at least level 61, maybe a little bit over, we'll, we'll find out. By the way, I will be live streaming the launch, so we'll find out then. And then I also have some extra items, which I'm going to show you in my bags right now. Okay, so I actually have items like this Strathome Holy Water, which is required to complete a quest in Light's Hope Chapel, but I don't actually need the quest in my quest log to, you know, actually get the item, which means I can get the item, accept the quest, and then instantly turn in that quest for loads and loads of XP. And there's various quests uh, like this available, for instance, the Power Crystal quest, you can collect them without having the quest. You've also got stuff like Crypt Fiend parts, and then the Argentine Valor tokens. You can turn in, I think, one of them for for a quest, and then you can turn in ten for another quest. The Bee Jews there, Savage Fronds, and various other things like that. In fact, I have so many of these items, I'm going to quickly show you my mailbox, because I can actually fit all of the items into my inventory, because I wanted to obviously leave a little bit of space, because I've still got some tiny bit little bits of prep to do. So let me show you my mailbox. So if we go to my mailbox here, I have lots of items, like the rest of the crypt, crypt theme parts, you do need 30 of them, and these encrypted uh, Twilight text. This is mainly the quest that you can quickly turn in in Silithus. You need loads of these expensive items. I think it set me back 100 gold, or maybe 50 to 100 gold, buying all these items to get them ready for TBC. So when I'm in Silithus, I can quickly get these out of my mailbox, put them in my inventory, and then start turning in all of those quests for loads of XP. Another thing I've got, if you look at this item here, is the Winterfall Ritual Totem and also the Deadwood Ritual Totem, which will grant me, I think, roughly an extra 20,000 XP. But um, I haven't actually accepted the quest, right? This is a an item where you have to press it in your bag for you, obviously, to accept the quest. So I can leave a number of these items in my inventory to get even more quests for when TBC does launch. I've actually got this one as well, the General Dracosaf's Command. And there's actually a few more that I do need to get because there's one of them in Silithus that grants like, I think, 15,000 XP or something ridiculous like that. I think, I think it's actually closer to 20,000. So, I, yeah, I'm going to pick that one up as well. 
But anyway, moving on, now I'm going to talk through my gear. So obviously I had very limited time to obtain decent gear. I have been doing raids here and there, but I've only really been able to get into AQ20 and Zulgarub consistently. I did do some Blackwing Lair, and I did get one item from Blackwing Lair actually, which is actually pretty decent. So because of my leveling strategy, I've also tried to prioritize getting spell hip gear as well. And I am actually leveling with two other warlocks, which has adapted the the gear I've got and actually the spec that I've gone for. But anyway, I'll talk talk you through my gear. So some of the gear pieces I very quickly bought from the auction house. I'm obviously trying to prioritize getting as much shadow damage as humanly possible because ideally I want to be able to dot a mob and then move on to the next mob. Maybe even only use shadow word paint for every mob because we've got two, I'm actually leveling with two warlocks and we're doing like open world leveling. So hopefully our playstyle, well, our, our mindset is we dot everything in sight and just let everything melt and then fear it when, you know, they're causing trouble. So as you can see, my gear, I've got, I've started to stack a lot of shadow damage, which I'm a little bit worried about, to be honest, because I, I might need more intellect. So I've got my fell cloth hood there. We can very quickly buy that off the auction house, which is pretty good. I've got the sapphire pendant of, uh, pendant of winter night, 20 sp you know, shadow damage on the necklace. You really cannot complain at that. I've got the Master's Mantle or Shadow Wrath. Quite lucky, lucky to pick this one up. 30 shadow damage on my shoulders. Then I've also got Stormpike Sage's Cloak that I got from AV Rep. But I've also got this alternative here from Upper Black Rock Spire with Spell Hit on if we start taking on mobs at a higher level. Then I've got uh, sh full shadow damage chest gear. A 41 shadow damage, so that's pretty ridiculous. Then I've got the Shackles of the Unscarred I got from AQ20. The main thing I like about this is obviously the shadow damage. Then I've got Shadow Weave Gloves, which were okay. They, I could prefer them with a little bit more intellect. Then I managed to get some actually decent Zorg Rub gear. So I've got the Belt of Untapped Power here with 29 spell damage on it. And also the Blood Tinged Kilt with another 28 spell damage on it. And a big chunk of intellect and stamina, so I'm happy about that. These are Foot Wraps that I've got. 27 spell damage, and this just drops from Strathom. I was quite surprised by this. That's a ridiculous amount of spell damage. Now, one of my favourite gear pieces, the Band of Force Concentration, which also gives me a cheeky little bit of spell hit, which will be coming very, very useful, and also 21 spell damage. At the moment, I've got Band of a Unicorn, but if you look at my quest log, I'm going to be picking up a quest very quickly. Um, let me find it. Very, yeah, the Princess Surprise, the Songstone of Ironforge, which is just a little bit better than that one, so that's just a temporary gear piece. Then I've also got the Briarwood Reed, which I talked about before, very lucky to get that. And totally ignore this item, I've been using it from here and there, it's actually kind of cool. But I am going to be picking up the the power of the High Chief, or whatever it's called. Um, there's an attack power version as well, with a very similar name. Which So basically I'm going to get an extra 58 spell damage from my trinkets, so very happy about that. And I also got this wand, but like I said before, I'm going to be replacing that, it's just a temporary gear piece. Here I have a Tome of Shadow Force, I picked this from Alteric Valley. I did this in the pre-patch, it was very cheap to buy actually, it only cost me like 5k honor points, which are then 25 marks I think, so yeah that was very cheap and it's 35 shadow damage. And then I got the Grand Marshal's Mage Blade, and this took me like 3 days to farm, it was brutal and painful, but I got through it because I knew it was probably the most impactful gear piece that I could obtain on my character, you know, 72 spell damage, and I also put a fat 30 spell power damage enchant on it. I've also got a few other enchants here and there. If you look, uh, when I mount up, I uh, obviously have the carrot on a stick and then I've got some knitted sandals with an extra little bit of mount speed on them. And I'm probably going to get the glove riding skill enchant as well for a total of, I've talked about this before, you get an extra 18% mounted speed, which is pretty decent. And I'm going to be running around the open world quite a lot. As you can see, I'm kind of, I just feel extremely fast on this mount, which is partly because of the mount, um, which... Uh, actually have not mentioned it. I actually bothered to get the black war steed because um, I've basically just basically been quite frugal. I wanted to save gold um, because I, I didn't want to buy the mount. So I just thought, I just, you know, I've found loads of marks. I've got loads left over. I'll just buy the black war steed and it looks awesome on a night elf and that saved me a hundred gold. So I really cannot complain at that. So let me talk about how I have prepared my pre uh, Professions. This is literally like my fifth take of trying to save that. For some reason, it's a bit of a tongue twister. Anyway, so I've got my tailoring max, but I'm not going to lie, I've been slack of my enchanting. But um, I do actually have materials on one of my bank holds to get my basically my tailoring leveled up to, I think, about roughly about 325 skill 
basically when TBC launches, I am going to go to Shapraf and get tailoring quite early to basically so I can just level up my, my tailoring. I'm actually focusing, um, when, when TBC does actually launch, I'm actually focusing on getting my professions up like basically straight away. That's my main goal. So yeah, so I can get my tailoring up very quickly with my stuff in my bank or which I will log on and show you. And I also have loads of materials to level up my enchanting. I'm only going to level up my enchanting to, to skill 250 because that is the skill that I need to start disenchanting all of the greens and everything that I find in the open world while I'm leveling in Outland and quest items as well because I'm basically just going to be disenchanting loads and loads of stuff on the launch of TBC and I'm just going to, I'm just going to auction house it, I'm just going to sell it. I don't think I'll even bother leveling my enchanting to be honest. I just want to make as much gold as possible within the first two weeks. I'll probably just disenchant everything and sell other materials. So this is my bank alt. As you can see, I'm always sending cloth to him, so I'm gonna get all that into the uh, bank alt right now. I've got loads of enchanting materials lying around, like Nexus crystals and, you know, and obviously my strange dust, which I'm mainly using at the moment to grind up my skill. I will have to buy some more enchanting materials though, I think. And if you look at my bank, um, oh, I must have actually used all my rune cloth, but, um, Looks like I'm going to have to buy some more rune cloth, but what I'm basically doing is I'm stocking up in loads of enchanting materials and tailoring materials on this character, and then I will eventually send them over to my main, obviously, to get those skills leveled up, and I do need to get to 250 enchanting before the launch. So that's like the last thing I have to do to prepare, really. Right, so I'll talk briefly about the spec that I've prepared for leveling in TBC. As I mentioned earlier, I am actually leveling with two other Warlocks in the group. So my 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 build is basically complementing that fact as much as possible, while also just... It's basically, basically mainly focused on like increasing my dot damage and just my basic survivability. So I skipped a lot of talents like, for instance, reduce cooldown on Mind Blast, because I, I know I'm not even going to probably use Mind Blast while leveling up. It's just not worth it. I'm going to be taking on mobs at a higher level. So what we're trying to do essentially is get the dots up and then just let the dots drop them down. Because once you've got a dot up onto the target, then it will continue to deal damage even, you know, and it won't bear in mind that you have low hit chance. You just have to spam the dot, eventually get the dot up, and then it will start to rot the target down. So this is the main build I've gone for. You know, I've gone for Spirit Tap and Blackout. So Blackout to again, for a bit of survivability, Spirit Tap, pretty essential, because um, I'm going to be trying to get the killing blow on basically every single mob to um, essentially, yeah, maximize my mana regeneration. I've got Mind Flay, but I'm not probably not going to be using that. The main thing here is Shadow Weaving. So with Shadow Weaving on every single mob that we're going to be taking down, that's massively going to boost the Warlock's damage and obviously my own, so I really can't complain at that. I've also got Improved Vampiric Embrace, which I know not many people go for because it's a bit of a crap talent, but I think in this scenario it's going to be quite good, an extra 10% healing from all of my Shadow Damage, which is just going to keep, you know, obviously me alive, the two Warlocks alive, and both of their pets alive. So yeah, it's just going to be great, massive AoE healing, just constantly cycling around while we're trying to destroy the entirety of Outland. Then, apart from that, yeah, I've got all the basic talents, and then I've dipped my toe into discipline. Unfortunately, I can't pick up meditation, which is going to be a bit of an issue, but luckily, because I'm going to actually get to level 62 before I jump into Outland, I actually start doing actual, you know, process of killing enemies and stuff like that, I will have a point in meditation. So and then I can, you know, by the time I'm level 64, I'll have meditation maxed. And then I think if, when we when we get to like level 64, that's when we start, we're going to start to go to a much higher level zone. And that's when, you know, mana regeneration and stuff like that's going to be more impactful and more important. So yeah, I should be covered. I just need to get a few extra levels so I can get some points in meditation. Another thing we're actually doing, which I can't show you, but we're actually getting a, a mule, okay? What I mean by that is we're actually summoning a random dude, um, basically my friends of a friend's account. He's I don't think he's playing the launch, so he's basically not giving us access to his account, but we're basically summoning one of his characters to where we're going to be farming, and we're just basically going to trade off all of our gear, you know, all of the, you know, the stuff we pick up, to this, like, mule, so that we don't have to go to the mailbox to send stuff to our banking alts to obviously save time in the farming process because we're prioritizing farming gold and professions and stuff and we don't want to be slowing down um, and stuff like that because we're going to be quite, you know, in the middle of nowhere in the sticks so it will save us a lot of time. And that's pretty much everything that I am doing personally to prepare for the Burning Crusade. So that's where I'm going to end the video there. My name is Amanda Goblin. Oh, actually, no, there's one other thing I've just realized. I've, I'm 
getting wizard oils. Thought I mentioned that quickly before I end the video. Yeah, I've got but the only consumables I'm really using are wizard oils because they're cheap to get. And yeah, I don't really want to stack consumables that much. I want to save my gold a little bit. But anyway, my name is Manny Goblin. To my next video, ciao.